Well, the sun is out and the temperature is rising, so it is officially time to drink pink. I'm Camilla, wine educator at Corny and Barry, and this video is all about rosé wine. Let's start with how rosé is made. If you take a grape, any grape, regardless of the colour of the skin, the juice inside is clear. And all of the colour for rosé, or indeed red wines, comes from the grape skins. So we need to use black skin grape varieties. These grapes are crushed, which will release the clear juice, and then the juice from the skins stay in contact with each other until the desired colour is extracted. The longer the juice is in contact with the skins for, the more colour in the wine. For rosé wines, this time period is relatively short, usually a number of hours, resulting in the delicate array of pink hues we find in rosé wines. For reds, this time period is a lot longer, usually a number of days or even a couple of weeks. And this is why the colour of red wines is considerably deeper and often even opaque. It's the same idea when you make tea. Putting a tea bag in hot water will start to release the colour. Leave the tea bag for just a few seconds and you'll find less colour. Leave the tea bag for a few minutes and you'll see a lot more colour. The tea bag will also release flavours and tannins which are found in grape skins too. Tannins are the drying sensation you notice in the mouth. And this is why, if you use the same grape variety to make a rosé and a red wine, the rosé will be paler in colour, have less intense fruit flavours and few noticeable tannins. The red will be deeper in colour, more intensely flavoured and have a noticeable drying effect on the mouth from the tannins. Rosé wines are really versatile. They combine the refreshing character of a white wine with some of the fruity richness from a red wine. They are perfect for sipping without food, but they pair amazingly well with lots of different dishes. Everything from grilled fish to cheese platters, summery pastas and salads to Mediterranean cuisine and spicy foods. And don't forget a bottle or two for your picnic. I've picked three of my favourites to share with you. The first is from Chateau La Tour de l'Eveque in Provence, a beautifully sunny appellation in the south of France. Firmly owned, their philosophy is organic viticulture and sustainable winemaking, and the wines have been certified organic since 2005. It is a classic style of Provence rosé, with vibrant red berry aromas and a silky creamy texture. The second is the Santiana Pinot Grigio rosé from Romania, Whilst Romania may not leap to the top of everyone's list of wine producing countries, it has a serious history of wine production. It has been growing vines and making wine for 6,000 years, with its history and culture strongly connected to Southern Europe and Roman Empire. The style of this wine is delicate, light and refreshing, with gentle floral notes, red berry aromas and a touch of sweet spice. The third is the Nelson Family Vineyards Rosé. Situated in the Pearl region of South Africa, supremely talented winemaker Leisha Nelson ensures that the utmost care goes into producing every bottle of these award-winning wines. This wine shows a pretty perfumed nose with plenty of fresh ripe fruit on the palate and a good structure, ideal for barbecues and summer drinking. But remember, rosé is for life, not just for the summer. So when you fancy a splash of pink in your glass, head to corneandbarrow.com or give us a call. Cheers.